Hello, this is Michael Pierce from Tinker Talks Guns, and this is my first Honest to God content video for Tinker Talks Guns. I promised you weird guns, and well, these days this qualifies. This is a 25 caliber semi automatic pistol uh, made by F. Dusak. Now, some of you may actually not know what 25 ACP is. 25 ACP is a tiny, tiny little cartridge designed at the dawn of the 20th century by John Browning, specifically as a more reliable center fire alternative to 22 long rifle and very small pistols. And from a two inch barrel, it is quite comparable in power to a standard velocity 22 long rifle. And guns like the Duo were very, very popular in the 20th century, particularly with people who never had to shoot anyone. Um, they're small, they're very easy to hide, they're very discreet. And no, they're not very powerful, but they they gave good service and actually worked more often than not in terms of self-defense. Um, would it be my first choice? No. Probably not my second choice and maybe not my third choice. But in their day, they did the job. And uh, about as well as you could expect. So let's get ready to dive into this a little bit. We're doing this tabletop because this gun is small and you're just not going to see it any other way. So the question comes up, how small is this gun? Well, to sh give you a size comparison, I'm going to show you another small gun a 38 caliber snub nose revolver called a Chief's Special, which is considered a quite small gun. And as you can see, it pretty much dwarfs the, uh, the Duo. The Duo is fairly typical for 25 autos as far as size goes. And they're meant to be dropped in a pocket and, you know, carried very discreetly. Now, these were really, really popular in part in the early 1900s because people like things that are small and clever. And in the early 20th century, there was nothing more clever than a semi-automatic pistol. So let's have a closer look. First thing to do is make sure the gun is unloaded. We have a heel magazine release, which allows you to remove the six shot magazine, which as you can see is empty. Then we'll check the chamber by pulling the slide back. No bullets in the holes. No magazine in the magazine well. The gun is empty. And with the safety removed, you can't fire the gun because it has a magazine safety. You have to have a magazine inserted before you can pull the trigger and have it actually do anything. And to safe the gun, you rotate the safety 180 degrees to the rear. Now, this is a very simple gun. I mean, the controls are basically the magazine release, the safety, and the trigger. That's it. And typically, you would put a magazine in, rack the slide to chamber around, set the safety, and you're good to go. These guns were made for use at quite close range. So this one has no sights whatsoever, just a groove down the top. Um, the Colt that it's modeled after does have a front sight, but honestly, it's not that much more useful than just this groove. So dismantling the gun is pretty easy. You set the safety, as you can see it is, pull the slide back until the safety engages this notch in the back of the frame or slide. Then you can rotate the barrel until it gets all wiggly. And then you release the safety, which is not that easy with when you're taking the gun apart. And everything just slides off the front. You want to be very careful not to lose this. It's important. So the striker and firing pin spring come out. As you can see, the guide rod and spring come out. The barrel comes out the bottom and you're done. So that's realistically as far as you're probably ever going to have to take a gun like this apart for cleaning because they just, you know, 
They just don't get that messy usually. Putting it back together is equally simple, but it's not going to be entertaining to watch, so I'm going to stop the camera while I put the gun back together and we'll be right back. So to hit the high points of the history, Aftosec had been importing YDL pistols and others from Spain for many years, and in 1938 decided to produce his own pistol, this, the Duo, which, like the YDL pistols before it, is a clone of the Colt 1908, uh, sans the grip safety. And uh, it's a very nicely made pistol, much better made than the Spanish guns it replaced. He started making these in 1938, and shortly thereafter, the Nazis took over Czechoslovakia, and he did not like the Nazis, so he was not cooperative, and they replaced him. So it was under the factory, was now under Nazi occupation and rule, and kept right on producing guns. Um, these guns, in fact, were very popular with German officers. They were not purchased by the government and issued to the officers, however. They had to purchase them out of pocket. And that means that these guns were, during the war years at least, <laughs> were sold with a tiny military flap holster with an extra magazine and a pouch on it, which really was kind of ridiculous. But, you know, Nazis, what, do you, what can you do? Um, after the war, Dussek got control of the company back, and three years later, it was nationalized by the government under the name we all know and love, CZ. So, uh, Mr. Dussek did not get a great deal out of steel and bolts to FN's design. So, as I said though, the gun is very well made. It's very nice to shoot. Despite having no proper sights, it's not at all difficult to keep all my hits in the black at seven yards, which frankly is probably about six yards more than the gun was designed to be used at. Um, yeah, I mean, these were, these were close-up and personal sorts of weapons, generally speaking. And as I say, um, very pleasant to fire. If it had actual sights, I believe it would be quite accurate. And it's just fun. And of course, at its intended ranges, like three yards and under, you can put seven rounds on target very quickly with uh, surprising precision. So these guns are not by any means useless. And as I stated, um, in actual use, they have worked more often than not at stopping an attacker. But today, with the proliferation of micro 380s and nine millimeters and even 32s. Um, really 25 auto doesn't, it really doesn't have a place in the modern world except as a relic of a bygone age. But you know, they're fun. They're fun to shoot. They're, they're cleverly made and they're, they're neat to handle. And they're just, they're just a good time. Um, they don't cost the world, but they're not as cheap as they used to be. I paid $300 for this one about a month ago. And, uh, you know, it's been well worth it because I've really had a lot of fun with it. So there you have it. The Duo 25 Automatic, produced by F. Dusak and then by CZ. In production for about 40 years, and there are quite a lot of them, though we don't see a lot of them in America. So anyway, that's it for this time. Uh, thank you to all my Patreons again, and uh, you, you all stay safe and take care, and we'll see you again soon.